Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 14th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. Today I'm going to be going over one of my own hands that I played in a $50 buy-in online tournament. Um, again, all these hands are going to be either my hands or hands that a uh, viewer has sent in. So if you would like me to go over one of your hands, please feel free to send it in. It's effectively free coaching, and honestly, if someone wants to give me coaching, I will certainly listen. You know what I mean? It's like, if you can get free coaching and free advice, there's absolutely no reason to not take it. So please... Send in some hands, and I'll start going over some of the our, our viewers' hands. So right here, there is a limp from early position, a raise to 400 from I love 87, and then it's up to me with pocket kings. And obviously, kings are good. We're never getting away from it. Um, right here, I think a re-raise is going to be pretty good, because when this guy makes a 400, he probably has something, and because of that, he probably won't fold. Right here, I think a good raise size would be about 1,100. I don't want to make it too much more than that because I do risk blowing my opponent off their hand, which is never good. And if I make it, say, like 1,500, I'm, I should look pretty committed to the hand, in which case my opponent is going to fold a lot of the time. Um, if I had something like ace-queen in this spot, I think I would just go all in. If I had something like pocket nines, I'd probably just go all in. So whenever I make this smaller raise size, it actually should turn my hand fairly face up if someone knows my game. But honestly, people don't know my game, and because of that, they're going to be making mistakes no matter how I play. So I need to figure out the optimal play based on how I think I should be able to get the money in. So, in this hand, I actually made it 1300 which I do not like. I think it's a little bit too big. I think it makes me look committed. And whenever you have uh, effectively the nuts, you do not want to make your opponent think that you cannot fold, because then they should play relatively straightforward. So he gets back around to I love 87, and he goes all in. So at this point, point, we need to try to figure out what I love 87's range is. Of course, it doesn't matter here because we have kings. But I imagine, in this spot, if, if I love 87's good, he should be folding out a lot of hands. Because, honestly, J Card Shark's like never bluffing here. So, if J Card Shark's never bluffing, let's give J Card Shark a range of, like, aces, kings, queens, ace, king, and jacks. That's going to be about the extent of my range. So, against this range, um, I love 87 is probably going to need, like, let's call it 48% equity. So let's just run some numbers, see if he has 48% equity with some of these hands. So, pocket 10s is a very easy fold. Pocket jacks, a very easy fold. Pocket queens, he should probably go with. Ace-king offsuit, very easy fold. So, as you see... His range in this spot should be something like queens are better and possibly ace king if you want to go like down to the very bottom of the range. And you know that may surprise a lot of people because you know no one no one's really folding jacks in the spot, but I really think that it's a pretty clear fold. So he does go all in. So now I, me knowing him going all in, what hands should I call with? If I'm three betting these hands, which one should I call with? Notice here I need 27% equity to win. So if we know he's going with queens, if I have, um, let's say, pocket jacks here, you know, I need 40% equity, and obviously I don't have that. So if I actually make this raise and he shoves with pocket jacks, I should fold, which is one of the big reasons I would prefer a shove in the spot with jacks instead of a raise to this size, because now if he shoves on me, I'm in a pretty terrible spot, assuming he plays well. So anyways, I'm going to get it all in, of course. And he shows up with ace-queen suited, and I think this is an atrocious play, purely because J Card Shark's never bluffing, and if he's never bluffing, then ace-queen is trashed by my range. So let's give him ace-queen of clubs, and let's give me um, that same range. Let's go back and put it in here. Aces, two jacks, and ace-king, which honestly, that is my range whenever I make this raise. And you'll see that he only has 32% equity, so he is absolutely smoked pre-flop, and made a pretty big error. He ends up winning the pot, which is fine, and I win lots of equity. And, you know, whenever, there have been quite a few comments recently about how, you know, you don't want to get outdrawn, so you want to force the money in so you don't get outdrawn. But, you know, you are going to get outdrawn when you play poker, and the secret to poker tournaments is to make sure that you always have enough chips so that when you do get outdrawn, it doesn't take your whole stack. And, you know, a lot of players play really tight, trying to get it in extraordinarily good, but that's not really the way you win. The way you win is by taking smaller edges earlier in the tournament and building a stack so that whenever you do get it in in spots like this and lose, you still have something left to work with. And obviously I only have 600 here, so I'm pretty screwed. But um, I think that obviously this is very standard, and we can be very happy my opponent made a mistake. 
So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and I'll be back with part two, where I discuss the hand from my opponent's point of view. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.